Hey, what is up, everybody? I am back. Welcome to a new episode of The Game According to Me. It is your boy, AJ Tripp. And I've been gone for a while. Now, I, I may have told you this, maybe I'm not, but we were in the, we were moving and things like that, so I've not been around for a few months. But now that everything seems to be settled down, I'm trying to get back into the kind of normalcy type of things. And this is one of them doing the monthly um, pot, uh, sports podcast as we are not in the, the, the football area um, uh, and, that, and that may change too what I may do is I, uh, I think what I might do is I may just do um, have just mainly be a football podcast it's not sports but it's just a football podcast that I do during the football season and then maybe from time to time you'll get some game according to me specials or something like that if, if needed to. We'll have to wait and see because I, I, I don't know. You know right, right now I think as I'm as the way I have it right now, just doing this by myself and everything like that. Um, you know, and doing doing monthly podcasts about sports doesn't necessarily they like that. So, that kind of seems like that should be a weekly or bi-weekly thing. Maybe more like at least at the very least a weekly thing when it comes to sports. But we'll have to wait and see. Maybe I'll do it. Maybe I won't. We'll see. I see in the future. But uh, for right now, I'm doing I'm doing it like I am right now, going monthly by monthly. And uh, we've got some things to talk about today. We're gonna talk about the uh, what's going on in this like first um, month or so of the Major League Baseball season. We're going to talk about the NBA playoffs, and we're going to um, <laughs> maybe be the, the very last um, people to recap the 2024 NFL Draft, at least the first round of it, and talk, about, you know, and talk about some of the things that went down with that. So we got all of that um, ready to go, and uh, I think this is going to be a fun podcast. I'm glad to be back. Uh, glad to get back in the swing of things. So, let's go, let's go ahead and let's get started. Alright, so let's go ahead and let's start with Major League Baseball. Um, let's start with the standings as of uh, yesterday. Because the any games started off and not ended. So, um, starting with yesterday. Or actually, let's, I mean, let's go ahead and let's start with the stats. The standings are not working right for some reason. Okay, hold on. There you go. So let's now let's take a look at the standings. Let's start in the American League. The American League East, we got the Orioles 26 and 12, uh, 8 and 2 in their last 10. Uh, doing pretty good. The Yankees are 26 and 15, 7 and 3 in their last 10. They're on a the roll. Red Sox 20 and, 20 and 19, 4 and 6 in their last 10. Rays 20 and 20. 500, 6 and 4 in their last 10. The Blue Jays, 18 and 21, 4 of 6 in their last 10. The Man League Central, we have the Cleveland Guardians at 24 and 16, 4 and 6 in their last 10. The Minnesota Twins are 23 and 16, 7 of 3 in their last 10. They're in a little bit of a roll. So are the Kansas City Royals are 24 and 17, 6 and 4 in their last 10. The Detroit Tigers are 20 and 19, 4 and 6 in their last 10. And the worst team in the uh, major leagues, the White Sox, have been on the road. They're six and four in the last ten, but they have a twelve and twenty-eight record. American League West, we see the, the Texas Rangers at twenty-two and nineteen, the six and four uh, record in their last ten. The Seattle Mariners, right behind them, the twenty-one and nineteen, four and six in their last ten. The Oakland Athletics going to Las Vegas very soon, nineteen and twenty-two, uh, five and five in their last ten, five hundred, and the Anaheim Angels. Uh, Los Angeles, Anaheim Angels, however you want to say it, uh, 15 and 25, 4 and 6 in their last 10. The Houston Astros, surprisingly, all of that talent are in the last in the American League, but I think they've had some injuries they've had to dealt with, things like that. So that's probably why they are 14 and 25, 4 and 6 in their last 10. Let's look at the National League. The National League East, the Phillies are 28 and 12. 9-1 and one in their last 10 on a hell of a roll. The um, Atlanta Braves are 24-12. and 12. 
We went five and five in the last ten. The, uh, the Washington Nationals, 500, 19 and 19. Five and five in the last ten. The New York Mets are 18 and 20. Four and six in the last ten. And the Florida Marlins, who actually are actually, they are actually the worst team in the major leagues. You know, at least record wise. I think most people would tell you that the White Sox are, even though they've been on, they've been there going on a roll, but they've got the worst talent out of all of the places. The Marlins are 10 and 31 with a last uh, 10 of 3 and se uh, 3 and 7. In the Central, the Brewers are on top of 24 and 15, 6 and 4 in their last 10. The Chicago Cubs are 23 and 17, uh, 5 and 5 in their last 10. The Pirates are right behind them at 18 and 22. Four and six in their last ten. The Cincinnati Reds, seventeen and twenty-two, one and nine in their last ten. Very bad at losing streak. And the Cardinals, same thing, fifteen and twenty-four with a one and nine record in their last ten. Getting the cellar fillers of the NL Central. And now for the last, but at least the National League West, the Dodgers, on top of the division, twenty-seven and fourteen, eight and two in their last ten. The Padres are twenty-one and twenty-one. 500-7-3 in the last 10. The reigning defending National League champion, Arizona Diamondbacks, are 18-22, and 5-5 five and five in their last 10. The San Francisco Giants are 18-23, and 4-6 in their last 10. And the Colorado Rockies, the second worst record in Major League Baseball. But again, we talk about the White Sox. They are more than likely the worst team. The Rockies are 11-28 with four, our, our last 10 record of 4 and six. So that is it for the standings. Let's take a quick look at the stats. Um, uh, we, as we talk about um, leading the league in batting average, we got Stephen Kwan uh, of the uh, Cleveland uh, Guardians. He's on top. So is he, so, so he, so Tiny is next. Uh, I should say Stephen Kwan has a 3. 53 average, so Tiny is 352. Jeremy Pena of the Houston Astros is next with a 345 average. Alec Baum, the third, oh no, actually, next is Dre Turner of the Phillies, and actually Alec Baum as well. They are both tied with a 343 batting average. William Contreras of Milwaukee has a 342 batting average. Mookie Betts of the Dodgers, a 335. Salvador Perez of Kansas City with a 326. Jerickson Profar has a 321 batting average of the San Diego Padres. And rounding up the top 10 is Elias Diaz of the Colorado Rockies with a 320 batting average. Doing great work there. Leader in home runs, Gunnar Henderson of the Baltimore Orioles has 12. Marcia, Marcia Zuna, DH in Atlanta, has 12 as well. Kyle Turk of the Houston Astros has 12 as well. Tescaro Hernandez and the Dodgers. He has 11. Justin Naylor for his baseman for the Guardians has 11. Shahiri Otani of the Dodgers has 11. Cal Raleigh, um, that's how I spell, uh, the catcher for the Seattle Mariners. He has 10. Mike Trout has 10, although Mike Trout has been injured. He's been on the injuries lately, so he was probably even higher on this list just maybe a week or so ago. Uh, Peter Alonzo for the New York Mets is, uh, is at 9. With nine, and that's we have a lot of people in nine. Peter Alonso, L.A. De La Cruz of Cincinnati Reds, Riley Green of the Tigers, Bryce Harper of the uh, Phillies, Rich Hoskins of the uh, Brewers, Ryan Jeffries of Ryan Jeffers, excuse me, of the Twins, Aaron Judge of the Yankees, Shea Langeliers of um, Oakland, Ketel Marte of the Diamondbacks, Max Muncie of the Dodgers, Tyler O'Neill of the Red Sox, Jose Ramirez of the Guardians. Brent Rooker of the Athletics, Kyle Schwarber of the Phillies, Juan Soto of the Yankees, all tied uh, at nine um, with nine home runs. So there you have it. Those are the top, quote unquote, ten <laughs> in home runs as well. Uh, batting at, or no, or RBIs, we have um, Ozuna of the Braves with 38. Hernandez of the Dodgers, 33. Perez of the, of the, of the um, Royals, 33. Ramirez of the Guardians, 33. Soto of the Yankees, with 33. Baum with the, of the Phillies, with 32. Contreras, Garcia, Contreras of the um, Brewers, Garcia of the Rangers, Jeffers of the Twins, Naylor of the Guardians. Round out the top 10. They are tied for seventh, each of them with 30 RBIs. 
And quickly, let's take a quick look. Uh, stolen bases. Eli, LA did a cruise in Cincinnati has 25, which is great. The stolen bases coming back is becoming a bigger and better thing. I think that's a great one. Bryce Terang of Milwaukee has 16. Jose Cabrero of the Rays has 15. So does Bobby Witt of Kansas City has 15 as well. Okuna, who we went on last year, had 40 home runs and 70 stolen bases. He's on the list with 14 at 5. Jacob Young of the Nationals has 13. Lane Thomas of the Nationals has 11. And then a, a three-way tie for 8. Uh, uh, Dyron Blanco of the, Re of the Royals, Spencer Steer of the Reds, and Trey Turner of the Phillies all have 10. Rounding out the top 10 lists there. Taking a quick look over now on the pitching side of things. The top ERA men is uh, Sh Shota Imanaga, one uh, ERA of 1.08. Uh, Ranger Suarez of the Phillies has a 1.50. Uh, ERA, Zach Wheeler of the Phillies has a 1.64 ERA. Javier Assad of the Cubs uh, has a 1.70 uh, ERA. Seth Lugo of the Royals has a 1.74 ERA. Cutter Crawford of the Red Sox has a 1.75 ERA. Tariq Subo of the Tigers has a 2.02 ERA. Dylan Cease of the Padres has a 2.19 ERA. Ronel Blanco has a 2.23 ERA for the uh, Houston Astros and Tanner Hulk of the Red Sox is a 2.24 ERA. Those round out the top 10 in ERA. Um, as we go here, we go for the strikeouts. Leading the league in strikeout, Tyler Glasnow of the Dodgers has 73. Garrett Crochet uh, has 64 of the White Sox. Um, Zach Wheeler of the Phillies has 63. Dylan Cease of the Padres has 60, uh, mm -hmm. along with um, Scubu of the Tigers and Peralta of the Milwaukee uh, 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 no only Tariq Suber has 60 excuse me P Peralta of the Brewers has 58 Cole Reagans of the Royals has 57 Luis Castillo of the Seattle Mariners has 56 Jack Flaherty uh, Jared Jones also has 56 and they run out the top 10 in strikeouts as well as we take a look um uh, take a look really at the bullpen, the closers, uh, and this is the last one we'll do here for this. Uh, Kyle Finnegan has 12 saves and 13 opportunities. So does Clay Holmes has 12 and 13. Robert, uh, um, Kyle Finnegan of the Nationals, Clay Holmes of the Yankees. Uh, Suarez of the Padres is perfect, 12 out of 12. Emmanuel Chase of Cleveland, he's 11 out of 13. Ryan Hesley of the Cardinals is 11 out of 12. Rossell Iglesias of the Braves, he is 10 out of 12. Jason Foley of the Tigers is 9 out of 10. Kerry Kimball of Baltimore is 8 out of 11. James McArthur of the Royals is 8 out of 11. Mason Miller of Oakland is 8 out of 8. And Evan Phillips out of the Dodgers is 8 out of 8. Those are rounding out the top 10, top 11 closers with the most saves. So. There you guys have it. Just a quick um, look into uh, the, what's, good, what's happening with record-wise and stats-wise. First month of um, first month or so of the Major League Baseball um, uh, season. Um, quickly, uh, for those who don't know, I'm a Cubs fan. I'm happy, happy the Cubs are doing their thing. They're taking on the Pittsburgh Pirates right now. Uh, Kyle Hendricks is, is back off of the, the mound, so we'll hopefully he's found some work and he'll get back on track. So, um, Cubs are getting healthy. I think they have a good chance of winning the Central, and uh, I think this is going to be a good year for us Cubs fans. This is going to be a good year for baseball all together. Um, so, uh, the next time we reconvene, uh, we'll give you another update. On what's happening with uh, with Major League Baseball, I think maybe at us my next ones will be maybe at the end of June, and at the end of June there will also be maybe around the time we'll know maybe like the All Stars or something like that. So let's go ahead and now pick to uh, go ahead and talk about the Major League, uh, not Major League, the NBA play. So before we get into the NBA playoffs, we have a uh, awards to get to for the. NBA's 2023-2024 20, season. 
Um, let's start with teammate of the year that went to Mike Conley Jr. of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, Tyrese Maxey won most improved player of the year of the Philadelphia 76ers. Niles Reed won sixth man of the year of the Timberwolves. Steph Curry of the Golden State Warriors won Kia Kutch player of the year. Uh, Dagnault, the coach of, I believe, the Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, yeah, he won the coach of the year. Um, Victor Rumiyama won rookie of the year of the San Antonio Spurs. Minus, uh, um, um, Rudy Gobert won defensive player of the year. It's his fourth one. He is on. He is that rare era where guys like him and Dennis Rodman are going to be Hall of Famers just because of their defense. I didn't think Ben Wallace should be a Hall of Famer, uh, but he he's in the Hall of Fame, and that's because of his defense. Rudy Gobert is going to be another one. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns won the NBA Social Social Justice Award, um, and of course his third and four years. His uh, third MVP in the last four seasons, Nikola Jokic of the Denver Nuggets, won the 2023-2024 MVP. Good on him. He's becoming one of the all-time greats of all time. I think he's already jumped up there maybe into the top 20, maybe even top 15. You never know with that. Um, but now, let's go ahead and let's talk about what is happening with the playoffs. We had, uh, let's go back to the first round, uh, which are in the Western Conference. Um, the Oklahoma City Thunder swept the, the New Orleans Pelicans for a zero, and they, they swept them so bad that at one point, Charles Broccoli said, as, as many of you know on the inside the NBA TNT show, they like to do this thing where they go fishing and they have one, two, three Cancun, which is what you know, and they like to do like for teams and kind of as a joking way or something like that. But at one point, he said, this, 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 this team, New Orleans, quit. We're not gonna send them to Cancun. We're gonna send them to Galveston, Texas, and. <laughs> And that has just been, it's been a whole big thing. It's been so good, and it's all over TikTok, and now it's a mean job from Texas. Very, very funny. Um, and we might talk about, if I can if I remember, we may talk about that after we get through through here, um, about the inside NBA on TNT. Um, the Clippers uh, lost to the Mavericks 4-2 um, in that series, first round series. The Timberwolves swept the Phoenix Suns for nothing, causing Frank Vogel to be fired after one season. They've already hired a new coach, Mike Budenholzer, former Atlanta Hawks coach, former uh, NBA champion coach of the Milwaukee Bucks. He is now coaching the Milwaukee uh, with the Phoenix Suns, so we'll see about that. The Nuggets beat the Lakers 4-1, another first round exit for LeBron James. Um, almost another sweep, and I, 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 I think that um, for the people who want to consider LeBron James the GOAT, you know, and, and even those who, or even those people like on TV who have said he's the GOAT, they are not starting to question does that about the, the time that he has, he keeps getting coaches fired. He has had 10 coaches in his illustrious career, 10 coaches. He's going to have an, an 11th coach if he continues to play, and I think he will. But he's going to have an 11th coach in over 20 seasons. That's <laughs> do, do the math, folks. That's, <laughs> that's a coach, you know, that's, that's a little bit more than a, 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 over a season. A season and a half of, you know, you know of coaches. Season and a quarter, maybe even. So it, it's. It's unreal what is there with with with, uh, with LeBron. So that's what's happening in the Western. That happened in the Western Conference first round. Uh, in the Eastern Conference first round, the Celtics beat the Heat for one. Jimmy Butler was injured. He got injured in one of the uh, in one of the playing tournaments. He then said that if he was healthy, he would not have lost to the Boston Celtics and he would be beating the Knicks. Pat Riley has said, you know, if you're not playing, just probably shut your mouth. Jimmy Butler is a I think one year left on his contract, so we'll see if he wants to, to, to stay in Miami after this or anything like that. We'll have to wait and see. The Cavaliers beat the Magic in a seven-game series, four to three. Every every uh, every uh, game with the home team won. This is a tremendous series. The Magic are on their way. Um, 
I don't think the Magic need to do anything this offseason. Just except just draft the draft a player. They don't need to try to you know you know sign any big name to trade for anybody. I think uh, I think they've got what they need. They've got their superstar in Paolo Benchero. They've got that guy. They've got a an all star in Franz Wagner. I think that's a, that's a very good guy. And I think you know going back to like, like the Bulls and things like that. I think they've got their Horace Grant and. And, uh, and Jonathan Isaac, so I th- and then they've got good role players around them. You know. They don't need to try and you know trade for trade for a quote unquote another star or anything like that. Just just improve, just improve, get better. And I think they're gonna they're gonna be uh, they're gonna be a big big time player in this Eastern Conference come next year. The Bucks and the Pacers. The Bucks were without uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo. And the game lit it for a few games as well. So the Pacers beat them uh, in a six, uh, four games to two. Uh, that was kind of expected. But, and Doc Rivers joined in the middle of the year. So, But I think they'll be back. But there's been some talk about it. Daniel Dean Leonard not wanting to be in Milwaukee. You know, Dean Leonard wanted, he wanted to go to Miami and play with Jimmy Butler. You know, but that's where he wanted to go. So... We'll have to wait and see now what happens in the offseason and something happens there. And in, in a, a seven-game series, the Knicks beat the Sixers four games to two. Um, again, they're, talk, they're talking about there about the 76ers and Bede and Maxi and what do you need in Bede? Can he really stay healthy? You can't possibly trust him to stay healthy. You know, not only during the regular season, but in the playoffs. He's kind of like Kawhi, Lipper, Kawhi Leonard in the, in, in the, on the Clippers. You can't trust him to be healthy at all. You know, do they need another star so that if Embiid is down, they still just have more than Tyrese Maxey. They have other guys there. Who knows? It's more talk about maybe trading for Paul George or, 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 or getting, uh, getting Jimmy Butler back. Who knows there? But I, I, I think something does probably need to be done there. Unlike Orlando, who doesn't need to try to trade for anybody. They just, you know, I think Sixers may need to try to get somebody. Else there, because Tobias Harris, who they kept over Jimmy Butler, has not been the guy at all. It's not been that. Th- been that Thursday. He's not been a Horace Grant. He's been more Dennis Rodman. Uh, but I can't say Dennis Rodman. He's been, he's been more Judd Bush. <laughs> he's been more Judd Bushman than uh, Dennis Rodman or Horace Grant. So next was on. Now we got to the the the, the semifinals. The game's going on now. Uh, Dallas leads the Thunder in a 2-1 uh, series lead. Uh, they won last night. Uh, the Mavericks take, take that 2-1 lead. Um, the Cavaliers are down 2-1 to the Boston Celtics. Um, again, last, yesterday, Boston Celtics took care of business. Now today, we've got uh, game fours uh, of these series. we got the Timberwolves at the Nuggets. Um, on Friday, the, the Nuggets did, um, at home showed some fight. So some 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 heart, and uh, showed that championship spirit, and they took down the Nuggets in pretty easy fashion, in a blowout fashion, in Game Three. We'll see what happens tonight in Game Four, and in just a couple hours, uh, as as of this recording, the Knicks and Pacers are gonna go, um, are gonna go in Game Four in Indiana. We'll see how the Pacers do, and we'll also see what happens with OG and Nobi and Jalen Bronson. Will they play in Game Four with their um, banged up injuries, so that's that's where we have it right now. Come down to the, to the NBA playoffs, like I mentioned before. But next time I'm um, we'll be doing an uh, episode of the game, according to me, uh, we'll probably be near the end of June, which we will t- we will recap the rest of the playoffs and including the NBA finals and then also the um, probably the NBA draft as well. Uh, so I mentioned this earlier. I wanted to get to this. Um, there have been rumors that uh, NBC wants to get the NBA package again, and what they want is they want the they want the um, they want the TNT package. Now I don't know if now the TNT package, but if you don't you know TNT, obviously they get all of the um, they get uh, a Tuesday they they get Tuesday uh, nights at. Uh, uh, during the football season, the football comes on Thursday, so they do two the nights during the football season. Then once the football season over, um, the the main show, 
goes on to Thursday, and then there's the, the secondary show, which uh, they have Shaq and uh, Adam Lefko, uh Candace Parker, and uh, sometimes it's it's D- D- Dwayne Wade, sometimes it's uh, it's uh, Jay Crawford. Um, they're on on Tuesdays, and I think they uh, and of course they will be having going on in the playoffs, and I think NBC wants that. They want that package. I think it would, it would, uh, it, for me, I don't think it would be on the main NBC channel. Although they, they could do that, uh, I would think um, you know m- m- you know maybe Thursday night. But I think the Tuesday night package would probably be on USA, which which owns NBC Universal owns USA. They're losing Monday Night Raw uh, after even though they're gaining Friday Night SmackDown, they're losing Monday Night Raw. Uh, in the new year in January, so maybe they want to get some new, some have be more part of the sports package. They were they, they they were supposed to get the the hockey package, uh, apparently, but that didn't TNT got it. Uh, so we have all of that. Um, and the, the, they not only do they want the TNT package, but they want the guys at TNT. Um, however, um, Arnie Johnson has said he is not leaving TNT. He's worked there for forty years. He's a turn of sports guy, uh, and also they do, they they still have March Madness, so he can still work March Madness. He can do baseball. There's a lot of things that they, they have. Now, as for Shaq, Kenny, and Charles, I'm not necessarily sure what they do. I'm not sure if they would go along with NBC if that were to if NBC was to get the package. Uh, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure if they would want to, you know. Maybe go, maybe stay there for the NBA, you know, for the college, you know, game, work on the college uh, stuff, uh, or if they would want to retire. You know, I, 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 my, my guess would be is at least, at least in Charles, we don't ever know. Charles would probably want if, if he, he may, he may want to retire, uh, if, because that's you know that's kind of like a family. They've they've done that show for years now. You know, it's like. Over 20, 25 years for, you know, you know for the uh, turn of sports and inside the NBA and things like that. And you know, first you know Kenny joined, and then Chuck when Chuck retired, he joined in, and and then Shaq has joined. He's been in there the last 12, 13 years himself. Um, and that's a great show. It's the best show. It's the best best studio show in switch in sports. It just is, and to now have that possibility to be gone is it's breaking a lot of people's hearts. It's, it's on a lot of people's minds, and and it is on my. It's the best show. I love it. I love what they do. Shaq and the Fool is crazy. They talk all that stuff. Chuck talking about the big old women in San Antonio, and now he's talking about the dirty, you know, the dirty beach of Galveston, Texas. And you know Kenny is is great too. And Kenny is has some fun too. And then Ernie is just a cosmic professor who can get down and dirty with, with them when when you know, when when they go there, he can get down as well. And it's it's just a great it's a great show. And the fact that it could be gone, um, I think is is it is incredible and it is, it is unfortunate. Um, so we'll have to wait and see what happens. Uh, I guess we'll find out sometime this summer about that. Um, now, f- for me, this is what I would do, and I'll, I'll leave it at this. If I was NBC, I would not, I would not want, I, I would not care about this. The pack. This, if if I can't get Ernie, Kenny, Charles, and Shaq, I don't want it. I I I, uh, I don't uh, uh, I I kind of honestly don't know want it. Now, if you're NBC, you can join in and have a thing like this. Listen, ESPN, ABC, they have part of the package. They don't need both both weekends. So, after football season is over, they get they have basketball on Saturday night, and then they have basketball on Sunday afternoon and Sunday night. So, take one of those. Take one of those. Yeah, say say it like this. We want we want to join in. Uh, it doesn't look like that. You know, uh, EJ wants to leave Turner Sports. We if, if we if we wanted that package, we want those guys. They're not going. We want the, the show. Anybody in the show, everything like that. They're not doing because Ernie's not going to leave Turner Sports. 
So that's right. We can't get that package. However, the folks at ESPN, they not only do they have the things on Wednesday and Friday, but they also have this other thing monopolizing the weekend where they have a sh the Saturday showcase and then they have sh games on Sunday too. We either need to get, we, we want either both of those or we need at least one of those. We should have something like that so that if, uh, on Sunday, we can have a Sunday doubleheader at 12 and then at, you know, at 12, at 1 Eastern, 12 Central. And then next game is at 4 uh, Eastern, 3 Central. So like that. We, we, we need to have that or we, or we need to have the Saturday night showcase where at 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 Central. We need to have one of those. That's what I would do if I was NBC. I would go after that and not try to go after the 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 um the TNT stuff. So But we'll have to wait and see what happens. Um but hopefully in the inside the NBA does not break up does not break up that fantastic show. Mm -hmm. And finally let's recap the NFL draft. <laughs> At least the first round. Um uh, going over all the picks, I give some my thoughts about all of them. Um, one, Caleb Williams for USC goes to my Bears. Number two, Jane Daniels LSU goes to the Commanders. Number three, Drake May of Carolina goes to the Patriots. Number four, Marvin Harrison Jr. of Ohio State goes to the Cardinals. Number five, Joe Alt of Tackle out of Notre Dame goes to um, the Chargers. Number six, Malik Neighbors wide receiver LSU goes to the Giants. Number seven, J.C. Latham, tackle out of Alabama, goes to the Titans. Number eight, the surprise of the first round, Michael Penny Jr. goes uh, to the Atlanta Falcons uh, from the Huskies. Number nine, Roman Dunze of the Huskies comes to the Bears. Number 10, J.J. McCarthy um, out of Michigan goes to the Vikings. Number 11, Ole Fashanu out of Penn State goes to the Jets. Number 12, Bo Nix of Oregon goes to the Broncos. Number 13, Brock Bowers of Georgia goes to um, the, the Raiders. Number 14, Talis Fuaga of uh, Oregon State. At the tackle, he goes to the Saints. Uh, 15, Lafia, La, 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 Latu. Of UCLA, edge rusher, he goes to the Indianapolis Colts at 15. 16, Byron Murphy, the second. Uh, D-Tackle out of Texas goes to the Seahawks. Number seven, Dallas Turner. 17, excuse me, Dallas Turner. Edge rusher out of Alabama goes to the Vikings. Number 18, uh, Amarius Mims, offensive lineman out of Georgia, goes to the Bengals. Number uh, 19, Jared Verse, the edge rusher out of Florida State, goes to the Rams. 20, Troy Offensive guard of the Washington Huskies goes to the Steelers. Number 21, Chop Robinson. Edge rusher of Penn State goes to the Dolphins. Number 22, Quinn Allen Mitchell of the Eagles. Uh, Quinn Allen Mitchell drafted by the Eagles. He's a cornerback out of Toledo. Uh, 23, Brian Thomas Jr., wide receiver out of LSU, goes to the Jaguars. Number 24, Terry Arnold, cornerback out of Alabama, goes to the Lions. Number 25, Jordan Morgan. Uh, off of the tackle out of Arizona goes to the Packers. Number 26, Graham Barton. Center from Duke goes to um, the Buccaneers. 27, Darius Robinson. Uh, Edge rusher from Missouri goes to the Cardinals. 28, Xavier Worthy goes to um, the, uh, from the, the wide receiver from Texas. He's the one that has the fastest 40 time of all time of 4.21. He, uh, he goes to the Kansas City Chiefs after they traded up. Uh, into the uh, traded up with the Bills, and let's talk about that. We'll get into that in a second. Uh, 29, Tyler Guyton of Oklahoma, the uh, office lineman of Texas. He goes, he stays in you know, the office lineman out of Oklahoma, goes to Texas. He goes to the Dallas Cowboys, number 30. Nate Wiggins, the cornerback for Clemson, goes to Baltimore, number 21. Ricky Pearsall, the right receiver out of Florida, goes to the 49ers, and number 23. After another trade with uh, the uh, Bills, Xavier Leggett goes to the Carolina Panthers. He's the wide receiver out of South Carolina. And just for your stuff, uh, 33, that was the Bills pick after they traded back from 28 to 32 and 32 to 33. They selected Keon Coleman, the wide receiver out of Florida State, who has been a, who has been a wonderful soundbite 
ever since he's you know, since he's gone to Buffalo. So it is amazing. But anyway, to go talk about members of this draft. Um, um, first three picks, uh, quarterbacks. First time that has happened uh, in a while. Um, actually, not in a while. Actually, it was, wasn't it? Actually, it was a couple of years ago, right? Yeah, a couple of years ago. Yeah, it was uh, Lawrence, um, Zach Wilson, and Trey Lance. So it has been a while. Um, but there was no, but there, no, there was no trade trading upwards really. But there was one swap. Uh, the Vikings traded up to ten for the Jets, so they could get McCarthy. But otherwise, there was no other major trade ups or anything like that. Trying some people trying to trade up to get a quarterback. There was some talk, I guess, but no really talk about it. So as you go talk about, we know that the Bears traded Justin Fields so that they can get Caleb Williams. And this going as I am a Chicago Bear fan, I live in Chicago and I'm listening to the radio and listen to Ryan Poles. This seems like this was done. Let last year after the season, after the season, they realized that they, they, they that Justin Fields was not the guy, and they needed to clear it up. And the only thing was just two things: was one um, was Caleb. It, it, it was you know one was Caleb Williams going to be uh, a, a type of person that is you know you know someone who fits in with the Bears culture. Was it, is, 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 was he a diva? Is he not a diva? Things like that, you know, were they going to believe some of the stuff? Was his pops going to get involved too much, anything like that? Uh, that seems to be not the case. And then the second, second thing was, was that where was they going to trade Justin Fields? Because they, they, they were getting a quarterback this year. And, and for me, to me, I think I, I think now, after hearing polls and hearing polls talk, I think that um, if Caleb Williams would have came out last year, and he had an opportunity to come out last year. If he even came out last year, they would have kept the number one pick and would have traded and, and would have traded those fields and to have Caleb Williams. That's just it. So I think not doing anything like that. Uh, number two, Jane Daniels to LSU. We'll see what happens. I'm not a big fan of Jane Daniels. I think he's Justin Fields Jr. Uh, he's a see as someone who um, who wants to run more than he wants to pass. He can't process information. I don't know if you'll be able to process the information that those fields can't do. And, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see what Washington does. They got uh, they hired uh, Cliff Kingsbury and put him in that kind of spread offense. So we'll see what he does. Maybe it worked for him. Number three, Drake May to North Carolina. I really like Drake May. I thought he was I thought he was the second best quarterback behind Caleb Williams. And actually I would have been okay if the Bears would have took if they would have found out that Caleb Williams was not the person they would have taken taken Drake May, I would have been happy with him. Uh, although some people do do think that he is that he needs to take some time that he needs to sit behind uh, Jacoby Brissett, that just doesn't happen in, in this day and age. You know, if you got someone who you think is better, he comes out. He, he may start the season behind Jacoby Brissett, but at some point, Drake May I think will play. Um, some people who think he's the best player in this draft, Marvin Harrison Jr. goes to Arizona. Him and Kyler Murray will now hook up. Let's see with the, with that offense. See how the, it gets better there. Um, Joe Holt, um, the tackle for uh, Notre Dame going to the Chargers. Now they have bookend tackles. They've got the Rashawn Slater from Northwestern. Now they have Joe Holt. This, that should pr protect uh, Justin Herbert and also help him out with the running game. And we'll see something like this. I, I, you know, one, one of the reasons why I did not want Jim Harbaugh to be the coach of the Bears is because I think he still lives He still lives back in the time of, of his era, you know, he you know runs the ball on first down, run the ball on second down, and if it's third and three and less, just run the ball on third down. It's run, run, run. This is a passing league. You have Justin Herbert, who in his rookie year threw for over forty three hundred forty three hundred yards, thirty one touchdowns, and ten interceptions. And now you and now you wonder if he's going to be someone who's who who doesn't even get close to that. If he's going to throw for thirty five hundred yards. Because they're going to be running the football. It's going to be interesting to see how that goes there. Um, Leak Neighbors goes to LSU, goes to the, uh, to the Giants from LSU. Um, he would, would, would he help Daniel Jones or would he help Tommy DeVito or whoever is the, the quarterback there in New York? Will he make them get be better? We'll have to wait and see on that. Uh, the Titans get uh, J.C. Uh, Latham to tackle from, from Alabama. Um, 
a, a guy to they believe in Will Levis, and I think and I think Will Levis showed last year that he's got some good talent. He's got to express himself, and he got to get better. Um, so we we'll have to wait and see, but he's got to now attack him to protect his blind side, J.C. Latham. Um, Michael Penny Jr., this was the surprise of the draft. Michael Penny Jr., you know, going to Atlanta when they signed Kirk Cousins to a four-year, $100 million some odd deal. And when they could have got some stuff on defense or even maybe even traded down to get more picks, to get more picks later, they took Michael Penny Jr. And as a report came out earlier this week that said that Kirk, the reason why Kirk Cousins didn't stay in Minnesota because Minnesota wanted to take a quarterback of the future. So so then he goes to Atlanta who takes a quarterback of the future. Poor Kirk. He, he gets disrespected everywhere he goes. So Kirk Cousins is a damn good quarterback. He's a top 10, top 12 quarterback in this league. And uh, he gets disrespected all the time. And it's unfair. Uh, Roman Dunze goes to the Bears at pick number 9, their second pick. Um, what the Bears are doing for Caleb Williams seems to be awesome. They uh, they traded for Ken Allen. They had DJ Moore. Now they got Roman Dumze. Uh, they got Cole Komet there, who had you know his best year I think last year. Um, he's a solid tight end. You know, if Caleb Williams doesn't work out, you, you can't be you're not gonna be able to say that it's the Bears' fault. You're just not gonna be able to say it. if Caleb Williams is not good, it's because Caleb Williams is trapped. Now I think for the most part, I think for the most part. The quarterbacks that have not worked out for the Bears is because the quarterbacks have been garbage. You know, Mitch Trubisky, garbage. Justin Fields, garbage. Uh, Reg Grossman, garbage. Jay Cutler with a trade, garbage. Kyle Orton was not garbage, but he was not. But uh, he was traded for Jay Cutler when he, if he maybe when, when, he, when he had a pretty good year uh, in two thousand and eight. Uh, the injury set him back, but I think he had a pretty. I think, and I think he was showing that he was probably the quarterback. He could have been a quarterback of the future. Brian Erlacher thinks so. Lance Briggs thinks so. They love Kyle Orton. Um and many other quarterbacks that have been drafted. Cameron now he was garbage. He was not the garbage on the field. He was garbage off the field. So it, it, it you know, so I, I, I just don't think that if this is, Cameron does not work out, it's not because of the Bears' fault. Um, J.J. McCarthy. Uh, goes to the Minnesota Vikings, uh, and if there's a, if there's if there is a place that is not uh, a, you know if it's not the Bears, the Minnesota Vikings is a great place for a quarterback to land. Justin Jefferson, um, J- uh, Jordan Addison, T.J. Hawkinson, uh, a, a lot of weapons out there to use. So, Jason McCarthy is in a great spot as well. Uh, we got uh, Kevin O'Connell under the uh, Sam Vatry. That can work well there. Olaf Fashanu, uh, Taco Penn State going to the Jets. It's a guy who's going to, and they, they, they've done a lot of things in the offseason through free agency to help protect um, uh, Aaron Rodgers. And now they've drafted the tackle. So we'll see. The Jets might, they might actually try to do something this year. Um, Bo Nix goes to Denver. Um, I, I would think he starts from day one. I don't know where other quarterbacks, Jared Stidham, I think, is there, but. Yeah, I think Bo Nix is going to start. Just, just, just go ahead and just start him. Uh, don't try to sit him, sit behind him or anything like that. Besides, he's played so much. He's ready. He's like 24 years old. He's played five, six years of college football. <laughs> so let, let's put him in there. Uh, a surprising move, a little bit of a surprising move, Brock Bars, 10 to the, uh, 12, excuse me, or, you know, that's 13. So ready. He's a tight end from Georgia. He's a great tight end. Uh, now, they already have Michael Mayer. They drafted Michael Mayer last year, tight end for Notre Dame. So you have Brock Bowers here. Listen, I am a fan of the, of the, of the two tight end offense. So that's the offense Peyton Manning used to run, and that's the, that, 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 that was his base. His base was the one back, two tight end, two wide receiver set, and he could run from that set. He could pass from that set. And they, 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 would take one, they would take the you know, tight end, other tight end out, keep in Dallas Clark, bring in Brendan Stokely or whoever the third receiver was, and then they would go from there. Uh, and he would pass from there. So, you know, I'm a big fan of the two tight end offense. Brock Barris and Michael Mayer, 
that would be something special there in uh in, in the Oakland Raiders. It just is not because of the quarterback. They, I believe they're the ones that signed Gardner Minshew. So and Gardner Minshew played very well in Indianapolis, even even to the point to what I was saying. Maybe this is a guy who should be a starter, and not necessarily a backup. So we'll see what's going on in Oakland or oh, Las Vegas. Excuse me. I apologize if I've been saying Oakland. Uh, Talis Fuaga, the tackle there of Oregon State, he went to the New Orleans Saints. Uh, there he's there to protect David Carr again. Um, Lafu Latu, uh, the edge rusher from UCLA, he went to the Indianapolis Colts. Now the thing with this guy is that he, um, a couple years ago, had to me was quote unquote medically retired because of a neck injury. He wanted to come back and play. He went to he, he got cleared. Went to UCLA, had a fantastic year. Some people probably took him off the board because of, of that, because of he was medically, the, the medically had to retire, but he came back, and now he's in Indianapolis. We'll see what happens down there. Um, Byron Murphy, the defensive tackle of Texas, went to Seattle. Uh, a lot of people wanted him in the, for the Bears, but I guess he's a, he, could, he could be a three technique. Uh, some people think, some people don't think, some people think he's a true nose. So we'll see what, what he happens up there in Seattle. Dallas Turner, the edge rush from Alabama, goes to Minnesota. That was their second pick. I believe they traded up uh, from 23 up there to get that to get that guy. They lost Danielle Hunter, who went to Houston, um, his hometown. So now they have another. They replaced Danielle Hunter with someone who might be younger, maybe someone who could be just as productive as him. Uh, Amarius Marys Mims, offensive tackle of Georgia. Uh, is in, is, um, goes to Cincinnati. Again, someone else to protect Joe Burrow. Hopefully, now Joe, Joe Burrow gets healthy and is fine there. Now, protect him even better because when he's healthy, he's protected. He is one of the best in the league. Without question. Uh, Jared Verse, this is this this is the first first round pick for the Los Angeles Rams since 2016 when they had the number one overall pick and selected Jared Goff. Uh, edge rush out of Florida State goes to uh, the Rams. We'll see what you know, they're working on there. Defense try to you know maybe try to get one more run out of Matthew Stafford because I think Matthew Stafford he's probably on his last uh, few years left as well. Uh, Troy Falunano, the offensive guard, went to the Steelers. Makes sense. They're probably going, whether it's it's Justin Fields or Russell Wilson. And there's been and there was, in the last couple of weeks there's been this weird thing that Jalen Warren, the running back from Pittsburgh. Stated that the special teams were thinking about even Justin Fields being out there to return kicks for the new kickoff group. Which it just, it just, which just makes me think. If they're, if, they're, if they're legitimately thinking about having Justin Fields out there, then they know that Justin Fields just can't, they can't play quarterback consistently like they want. And, and guess what? With his athleticism, if he can't play the position of quarterback consistently like he needs to, 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 you know, to play in this league, then why not switch? Why not switch positions? Why not become a wide receiver or a running back? You know, or some like or a kick returner. He's he's he is he is great in the open field. He may be the best open field runner in the entire league, and that's great. If you're a running back, wide receiver, cornerback, or a kick returner, not if you're a quarterback. So. That's just it for there. Uh, Chop Robinson, the edge rusher of Penn State, went to Miami. Um, now, they had some injuries on defense. I don't think they lost anybody on defense. I just think they, last year they got injured. So maybe there might be some, some thing, worries that some of those guys are not going to be back in time for the start. So so so, so they needed um, so they needed an edge rusher there while the other guys are getting healthy. Um they uh, also a couple, week, uh, couple of last week they signed Odell Beckham Jr., which was kind of like a surprise because they've got Tyreek Hill there, they've got Jalen Waddle there, and you would think that they wouldn't need more offense, but they decided to go with Odell Beckham Jr. anyway. So um, that was a strange one, but that's okay. Um, and the uh, the Eagles they went focused on their their down spot cornerback. They signed they drafted Quinion Mitchell. From Toledo, cornerback, and then like also at the beginning of the second round, they get Cooper DeJohn, the cornerback from from Iowa. So they've the first two picks, they went cornerback, their weakest spot, 
to help, help them out on defense. So we'll see what happens with that. The Jaguars, uh, they drafted Brian Thomas Jr., the wide receiver out of LSU. Now, they lost um, they lost Kevin Ridley to free agency. He went to the Titans, I believe. So they had to replace him, try to get more help for Trevor Lawrence. Who I think Trevor Lawrence is a good quarterback. He, he did have a regression this year, but I think he I, I think he's still going to be a good quarterback and a quarterback that you can confidently say that he's in and he's in the top you know 10 12 every year he just has to get there and under Doug Peterson I have no doubt about that Terry Arnold cornerback to Alabama to Detroit again this is another weak spot for Detroit was their cornerback play it was one of the things that kind of hurt them throughout the season last year so they're now uh, they, they, they drafted a, a cornerback uh, to try to help them out this year and I think that that might that might do some things. Uh, Jordan Morgan, the offensive of tackle out of Arizona, goes to Green Bay. Again, more protection for Jordan Love as Jordan Love gets better. Keep him, you know, keep him healthy. Keep his progression keep going right. Uh, you know, hopefully, you know, well, not hopefully. Uh, they're hoping for another Hall of Fame quarterback in this, you know, for uh, for Jordan Love. That would at the very least a quarterback that would maybe get them to another Super Bowl. So we'll see. Uh, the center from Duke, Graham Barton, went to Tampa Bay. Um, Darius Robinson, the edge rusher of Missouri, went to Arizona with their second pick. Again, um, Jonathan Gannon, the defensive guy, they're going to use that guy to, to rush the passer. Uh, we talked about this a little bit when I was first going over it. We talk, we're, we're going more depth right now. Uh, at 28, it was the Bills pick. They traded up, they traded down. To Kansas City, to Kansas City traded up to get Xavier Worthy, the wide receiver from Texas. He's, like I said, he mentioned he broke the 40 record at the combine, 4.21, the fastest run 40 in the history of the combine. And people are talking about did the Bills actually help the Chiefs get better? This is the, the Chiefs signed Marquise Brown this offseason, who was his speedster, um, and then they drafted this guy who was a, another, obviously was another speedster. Things like that. They've got they've, they've got Travis Kelsey there, and depending on what happens with Rasheed Rice and his stuff going on, his legal troubles down in Dallas, um, they're gonna have they're, they're gonna have more weapons for Patrick Mahomes than than ever before, and this and, and this could be and Patrick Mahomes is already through for five thousand yards and fifty touchdowns. He could have a tremendous year if they they, if they hold on to the ball offensively. So this is gonna be a fantastic. Uh, work out for them. As for the Bills, what were they doing? What were they thinking? I understand it. Yes, they they, they, they they haven't been able to get past the Chiefs three out of the last four years that they've been, you know, when it comes to the playoffs. They can beat them in the regular season, can't beat them in the playoffs, can't get past them. Uh, so why would you help them out? Well, maybe they need to, maybe because they need to get those picks and they need to get more picks. And then to, to get more in because they are they they got very injured and they, they need depth. That was one of the things they had a lot of injuries. Uh, Tre'Davious Wright at cornerback kept being getting, getting hurt. He's getting hurt like last year. Matt Milano, one of a good, very good linebacker, he got hurt. So they need some depth so that there are injuries anywhere they can have more depth. And like I said, they still ended up with a very good receiver. I think in Keon Coleman. He's a big guy. He's obviously luxurious. If he turns out to be a player, he's going to help out uh, Josh Allen without question. Um, Tyler Dighton, the off the top of Oklahoma and Dallas, um, you know, help to protect the line, maybe block. Uh, who knows? Uh, Nate Wiggins, cornerback for Clemson, goes to, to Baltimore. Uh, Ricky Pearsall, the wide receiver from Florida, goes to 49ers. This is something where this might be a replacement for a one of the two wide receivers, if not both. Um, Brandon, Ayuk, Brandon Ayuk wants a new contract. Uh, Dion Bill I think, wants a new contract. Both are talking about being, being traded. So who never knows? So Ricky Pitchell may be the replacement for them. So Brock Purdy can he'll have some people there. And then uh, Xavier Leggett, I said, the Carolina Panthers, who did not have a first round pick um, because of the uh, trade with the Bears. Bears they, the Bears had their pick, which was number one overall pick. They traded into the first round to get Xavier Leggett from South Carolina. So he, he stays home as Charlotte. Uh, as Charlotte is on the edge 
of South Carolina and North Carolina right there. It's a it's like one hour drive from Charlotte gets you into South Carolina. So uh, kind of a hometown boy stays home. And um, he's kind of been a bit of a media person as well. It's, it's one of those things where it's kind of almost kind of cringy because, you know, he's he's got that really southern accent draw where you can barely understand him. And he kind of sound, you know, and, and there's some things where he kind of, he, when he talks, it almost, he sounds unintelligent, you know, and and you kind of, I mean, it's one of those things where is it uncomfortable because it's like white people are enjoying this guy talk like this and uh, are they making, and it's one of those things where are they doing this because he, the time to they're making fun of him because he's black and everything like that, things like that. So who knows, you know, uh, what, it, what it is. But um, they have they have the right receiver, South Carolina, and he and he could be there to try to help Bryce Young's development as he has a now new quarterback and a new offensive coordinator and a new offense, I think more than likely. And now he can maybe have someone to try to help him in his growth to make to show that he was he that that, that they didn't make a mistake in passing on CJ Stroud. He's just as good as a quarterback, if not better than CJ. Now who knows? That may be a, a stretch because CJ is already shown he seems to be a fantastic quarterback, and so you never know. Um, but yeah, that's the first round of the NFL draft. There were some other. Things, you know, it happened later on in the draft. My Bears selected punter, the punter from Iowa, Troy Taylor. And people in Chicago have been going crazy. They like it, they don't like it, yada, yada, yada. And obviously there have been some other draft picks as well from uh, in the other rounds that have gotten people other excited and things like that. So, um, But that was just really the first round recap. And uh, it's a great job. It's always a fun time. And I think My Bears did a great job. Hopefully they've got their receiver. And hopefully they got the receiver who breaks who is the next guy to have all the receiving records in the Seattle Bears history, not Johnny Morris or Johnny Lujak or whoever the hell it is. And the same thing for Caleb Williams. Hopefully he's the guy who throws for four thousand yards, throws for thirty touchdowns, and be the first guy in Bell history to do that and he breaks all of the records that everybody else has, Jake Cutler and everybody else. And so hopefully that all happens there. So that was probably the last recap of the uh, <laughs> of the NFL draft you're ever here so um, yeah there you have it let's go ahead and wrap this puppy up alright guys so there you have it uh, episode 149 of the game according to me in the books uh, uh, next episode will be 150 nothing current not going to do nothing special or anything like that we're just going to like I said it'll probably be the end of June and we'll talk about the um, but do the same thing we did here. We'll talk about um, the major, we'll talk about Major League Baseball. Talk about after three months. We'll talk about the um, NBA playoffs, the NBA draft if it has happened, and anything else that has popped up in the sports landscape. Sports landscape. I'm not sure if anything else happens with the NFL or not. Maybe maybe the schedule release. Who knows? We can, we can talk about that on this episode, but maybe we'll wait until next month to talk about it. Um, again, be one of, the, one of the last ones to talk about the NFL schedule release. So, but there you have it. Thank you guys so much for listening. It is totally appreciated. Once again, as always, if you are someone who feels that you like this podcast and you feel the need to want to support me and this podcast, there's a multiple ways of doing it. You can go to the Spotify uh, podcasters thing. The link is in the description um, below. Uh, you can go to podcast.spotify.com slash pod slash show slash Andre dash trippers dash show slash support. I know that's a mouthful, but it should, again, the link should be in the description. Should be in the description below. You can go in there, go there, and support. They have three tiers: ninety nine cent, four dollars ninety nine cent, and nine dollars ninety nine cent per month. If you want to do that? You can also go to um, um, the, the, the Patreon. Go on and become a Patreon. Patreon.com slash AJ Trip. Once I hit a certain amount of patrons, you will be able to determine what you hear on uh, on my other podcast, The Word According to Me. And look out for that this uh, upcoming weekend. There's an episode of that coming out on um, May the 28th, um, May, May the 18th, excuse me. Uh, you'll, be able to, you'll be able to talk about what videos you want to see on my YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash AJ Trip. Or what video games I play on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash atriplet20. 
I, by the way, I have to have the video game. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it goes. I have, so if you choose from video games, I already have. So there you have it. There's a couple ways you can support me financially. Now, if you or someone who can't support it financially, I understand that. What, how you not do? How can you not do it financially? Well, all you gotta do is just share this podcast all over your social media. You know, wherever you're listening to it, this podcast, rate it. Give it as the highest rating you can, five out of five, ten out of ten, whatever the, whatever the rating is. Give it the highest rating. Uh, that helps me out as well because then that then goes into the algorithm where then they start to maybe promote this podcast a little bit more in some other places. So, yeah, all of that is what you do. But I, pre- I but for the listeners that I do have, I just appreciate the fact that you are listening to this and listening to me, and the fact that you choose to do so. Uh, and for that, I I can't thank you enough for doing so. With that being said, I will see you guys next month. Thank you guys so much for listening. This is your boy, AJ Tripp, signing off. As always, be good to each other, y'all. Be careful out there. And I am out.